Uh, great. Thanks, Seth, and so thanks to, to, to Deb as well for inviting me for, uh, to give this talk. Um, certainly, uh, hands-on experience is a big part of um, uh, engineering and what we need to teach to our students. A lot of students think of hands-on uh, as being a big part of engineering uh, uh, and the experience. Um, and uh, hands-on, we think about it in sort of two ways, uh, um, through, the, th through the labs that we have and then through all the different design projects that show up in our, in our various courses. Um, so if we can go to the next slide. Um, you know, up until now, when we thought about labs, uh, we think about it as a very controlled setting where we control the time and the location and the equipment and the students come in and use it just there and then. Um, and so the LFA model where students need to access um, everything that we need to teach from anywhere, then, then inherently it becomes a student-centered um, exercise. So, so it, it really makes us rethink what the purpose of a lab a section and lab period is um, and, uh, and so on. So I thought, I thought it'd be helpful to talk about it from a program standpoint across uh, within the college and within mechanical engineering specifically, and then within uh, the course that I ever see. So in the College of Engineering, we have four different programs uh, across the three departments that you see there at the bottom. And in the first two years, um, our students take largely the same, the same set of courses and then they specialize in their last two years. So what we did uh, earlier on in the summer to organize how we're gonna move all of our labs uh, essentially remotely um, was to look through and say what sort of exercises were important in the various courses that have labs and design projects. And then, and then is there a way that we can sort of modularize the hardware that the students would need to do these exercises um, at home? And so we identified uh, four courses within our first two years and within those courses um, nine core kits the students would eventually accumulate across those two years and the goal here was to enable it so that so the students could uh, build build this build this physical toolkit uh, and use it later on throughout uh, throughout the program and, and then and then have once they graduate um, and so and, and so these nine the nine core kits were meant to then be built upon and used in later courses so, uh, so we did that within the first two years, and then, and then within um, our, our respective programs, we looked to see what other courses would then, would then have uh, you know, hands-on lab experiences. And, and I'm not talking about any sort of the, uh, the software design or simulation labs. Those don't really need facilitation this way, but you can see um, the number of courses are shown there for each of the programs in the last two years. Um, and and uh, mechanical engineering has, has 13 courses or so. Uh, in which in which in which they need hardware, and so and so we've had to, to organize that in a way that would be um, minimize the cost um, that, that the students uh, that we'd be asking the students to pay. So um, that's sort of that's sort of the big picture standpoint over there. If we could go to the next slide. So looking at it for, for the course that I ever see, ME three hundred and ten is the senior level instrumentation course required within the mechanical engineering program. And uh, basically what we had to do was adapt our typical residential experience, which is, which is a dedicated lab section that, that the students register and attend e weekly. Um, and, that, and, that, and that typically includes four dedicated labs and then, and then a, then a long-term design project. So the various considerations we had to think about uh, for the LFA mode um, appear there below. And um, what we had to do was think about how could we have sort of the best value for the tools that they would have coming into the course so we could minimize the number of uh, add-on sensors that, that we need them to buy uh, you know, um, to, uh, to serve the course itself. And so um, uh, I did this by mapping out the, the concepts in the course and, and trying to match those up as closely as possible uh, to, these, uh, to, these, to these various hardware pieces uh, that we had identified. Um, so we're trying to minimize the cost overall. Um, these are new lab fees. We've not had lab fees before in the College of Engineering. So this is, this is new ground um, that we're embarking on here. And then, then we also had to make sure that this hardware was available in the numbers um, so the students could actually, actually obtain it. Um, we've had to think through things along the lines of shipping. How are we going to get things to the students? Um, how can we rewrite the lab manual so the students can do this at home? And, and, then, and then really, what's the goal of the lab period? So the lab period, we're, we're now thinking about using that as a, as a main troubleshooting uh, resource where the students will have done the main labs on their own prior to coming uh, uh, in, in for help. And then our graduate student teachers who help to, uh, to run these, uh, these formal lab sessions can be used more for troubleshooting once the students have already tackled these exercises. So um, we still have a lot to think through, how exactly we're gonna facilitate uh, group work as part of this um, and how are they going to interact with the team overall. Um, but we'll have some, some component of in-person troubleshooting help in these lab sections. And then the remote students uh, can, get, uh, can get the assistance through Zoom. Okay, um, and uh, I've got one more slide that just, uh, to, that, that just thinks about some of the things, um, you know, it's, uh, we're, trying, we're trying really hard to make sure that there is true value for this lab, that it does serve 
to overlap with the course concepts and reinforce those um, and provide transferable skills for the students as they move on uh, after the course. Um, so um, trying to keep in mind the technical ability that the students have at the time and how to build that up through the lab manuals um, and then the overall time footprint uh, for actually doing these exercises. So it remains a work in progress and we'll see hopefully how it all goes for this semester.